This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 2123, Your Worsening Worry Wants Your Help to De-Stress, by Ingrid Y. Hellander of IngridYHellanderLMFT.com. Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining me today. I'm Greg Audino, your host, and I'm happy you stopped in. This time on ORD, I'll be checking back in with a contributor that we've been sharing from for a while now, Ingrid Y. Hellander. She is a licensed marriage and family therapist. That's what the LMFT and her site name stands for. And she's got a great article today on worry, what it means for our relationships with ourselves and others, and how we can see it in a new light. So let's hear her work now and optimize your life. You are worsening worry wants your help to de-stress by Ingrid Y. Hellander of IngridYHellanderLMFT.com. Discovering, befriending, and naming your worry transforms and heals your relationship to your own stress. Everyone I work with wants their worries, anxiety, and fears to go away. It's natural and normal to want the pain to stop, the unease and stuckness to recede. The truth is, your anxieties can calm and stop stressing you out, but ignoring or waging war on worry is a surefire recipe for more worry. A first step to move out of the stuck patterns of anxiety, the chronic worry, lack of motivation, insecurity, stressful thoughts, and fatigue, is to know and name the sensations that are annoying you today. Here's why this technique is so important. Have you ever been to a playground or a youth sporting event where there are a lot of children? Notice what happens when just one of those kids calls mom. Yes, 15 women answer, expecting that the call is their child. Or imagine going to the dog park, and none of the owners have named their dogs. It will be a stressful herding event to get each pet in the car and home again. Names provide definition, meaning, and most importantly, a calm connection. When we know someone's name, we initiate a relationship with that person. Have you noticed how in some stores the cashiers will call you by name after seeing your credit card? Names are powerful connectors, and businesses want to use that power to create more sales. Now, let's apply this knowledge to stress and worry. I was talking with a 15-year-old high schooler the other day. She told me that her anxiety and worry has been with her throughout her life. She went on to say that as she has gotten older, her anxiety has increased and grown with her. As we talked, she described that she used to be able to get away from the pain by staying occupied and never alone with her thoughts. However, She now feels more stress, acknowledging that the worry has crept into her social and school life, invading times that used to be fun. This young woman is smart. She has realized that no matter how she tries, she will not outrun a part of herself. Ignoring, disowning, and pushing away stress is an ineffective strategy. However, it is the technique most often prescribed in daily living. We tell ourselves and others, don't worry about it, think positively, and it'll go away. When you deny and ignore worried parts of you, you undermine your own ability to calm yourself. Let's return to the example of the moms at the playground. Think about how frustrated the child is when they call for mom and 10 of the wrong moms respond. Notice, too, how the stressed moms begin to tune out calls, tired of jumping for another person's child. If you experience all stress as an unpleasant experience and call it the same exact thing in your mind, how can you ever respond in an effective way? There's not enough relationship and specificity between you and your internal experience. Like the moms and kids in the park, you will respond inaccurately to the wrong cues or ignore your needs completely, too confused by the many worried calls to answer. Internally, this feels overwhelming, which is fuel for more worry and anxiety. Now, think about how frustrating it is for the owners in the no-name dog park example. When calling a dog without a name or personal signal to connect, like a whistle, it's frustrating and disempowering. Owners will be seeking any means of personal connection to gain control. Can you imagine? The owners are running, kneeling, imploring, cajoling, and of course, bringing out treats to entice the pets. Both the dogs and the owners feel frenzied and out of control. Certainly, their worry is doubling by the minute. Contrary to popular belief, Creating a name and relationship with the parts of you that are stressed out does not increase the worry. In fact, it calms anxiety and empowers you to be helpful. Think about that for a moment. There is amazing power in being so attuned with your worries that when one thought or sensation begins to run wildly, you can kindly 
call its name, offer some care, and like the dogs in the park, take it home to rest. If this sounds a little strange, that's normal. Listen on for my three ways to get started. Number one, when you feel a little worry, anxiety, or stress, slow down for one moment. I often tell clients to use any excuse to have a moment with yourself. This might be a bathroom break, going to get some water, a brief walk, or even a moment to just close your eyes. As you practice, you will be able to do this more spontaneously. Begin to gently pay attention to your breathing, slowing or deepening it as it feels best to you. Number two, get curious about where you feel stress and anxiety in your body or mind. What are the qualities of the anxiety? Imagine that you are getting to know this part of yourself as you would a person or a pet. Let the worry show you who it is rather than telling it who it is. If this is too hard, that's all right. Simply breathe, and if it's possible, express a little caring or curiosity to the worry. Just say, hi, you're on your way, and some relationships take longer than others. Think about the dog who has come from a shelter and needs a little extra time. Number three. Now that you have a clearer sense of how this particular anxiety presents in you, you can give it a name. This name can be a broader description like my four-year-old or a specific physical quality like the heavy chest slash tight throat. You may actually find a name like Ziggy or Pesky or Frank. Let whatever you discover while focusing toward your worry guide your naming. You and your part can always change it later as you grow in relationship. It's similar to how we name children and pets, and then they often grow into a nickname. This is the beginning of your journey together with your worry, anxiety, and stress. Remember that no part of you is trying to hurt you. Take a deep breath and congratulate yourself for your discovery. This relationship will be a boon for you forever. You just listened to the post titled, Your Worsening Worry Wants Your Help to De-Stress, by Ingrid Y. Hellander of IngridYHellanderLMFT.com. Now, I am a big believer that if you want to be your best self in your relationships, or in anything you do, you need to fuel yourself properly. And that's why I'm so happy to have this show sponsored by Factor. Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals make eating better every day easy. You'll have over 35 options a week to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan and veggie, and more. And there's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. Factor is the perfect solution if you're looking for fast, upscale, and healthy options done easily. Not to mention it's flexible for your schedule. Get as much or as little as you need by choosing anywhere from 6 to 18 meals per week. Plus, you can pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime with no hassle whatsoever if something changes. So, Head to factormeals.com slash optimal50, that's optimal50, and use code optimal50 to get 50% off. That's code optimal50 at factormeals.com slash optimal50 to get 50% off. Picture a wardrobe upgrade with quality essentials at an unbeatable price. Quince has you covered with timeless pieces that never go out of style. You'll have them in your closet forever. Quince has all the must-haves, like Mongolian cashmere crewneck sweaters from $50, iconic 100% leather jackets, and versatile flow knit activewear. And all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. That's because by partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And most importantly, Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices along with premium fabrics and finishes. And as for me, I love Quince's versatility too. They have great home items as well as clothes, and I've been really happy with the bedding that I bought from them. When you look at it and you feel the material, you can tell easily that it's of high quality. So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com ORD for free shipping on your order and 365-day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash ORD to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash ORD. Okay, and a really important post from Ingrid today, right? First of all, uh, she gave my cat a shout out. Uh, (laughs) His name is Ziggy, one of the names she dropped. My cat's older brother, my other cat, is named Nikki Biscotti. I don't anticipate that name being brought up anywhere. 
But really, a, a post like this is so valuable because it helps us to do what we've talked about a million times, and that is take the vagueness out of our feelings and add some specificity or measurement, if you will, to them. Getting so clear with our feelings to the point that we can actually package them into their own identity that we can talk to is hugely important because we're able to establish a relationship with them. We're able to understand our feelings and communicate with them rather than always trying to vilify them or catch up with them somehow. And this idea aligns well with the way she ended the post, reminding us that worry is not trying to hurt us. Yes, if we can take a breath and see our worries for what they are, we'll find that they are indeed trying to help us, and there for a reason, hardwired in us for our survival. So how can we find the gap between those good intentions and the present moment? How to use that response in a way that's appropriate for the given circumstances? It's important to consider, but it's impossible if we're busy making enemies out of our feelings. That is something to think about. But that is going to do it for this one, everybody. Thanks a million for joining me today for another post. It really means a lot, and I hope you enjoyed our time today as much as I did. Have a great rest of your Tuesday if you're listening in real time, and be sure to come on back for tomorrow's episode, where your optimal life awaits.